Welcome to our Belinga Band tutorial. Um, out of the technical indicators, this one is probably the best. Um, this is what we always use on our trades, Belinga Bands. Um, they, they're so called because of the, the man uh, John Belinga invented them. Um, what they basically do is they encapsulate the price. And what often happens is the price will go up and hit the top band, it'll come down, hit the bottom band, hit the top band again. So they basically what they are is they are measurements of volatility um, when the bands are wide the price swings are quite wild so um, you can say it's volatile when they're quite narrow things have calmed down a little bit but we'll go through this in the video um, they act as price targets um, so when you get to a top of a Bollinger band quite often the trend will probably reverse um, a fair bit of the time Something to note, with Belinga bands, they will encapsulate the price 95% of the time. So if you get price movement outside of the Belinga band, what will normally happen is it will move back in range of the uh, Belinga bands. Um, so that's basically it. Um, what we'll do is we will go through and we will teach you everything you need to know. Just because this is on a basic tutorial, this is not actually a basic tutorial. This is more of an advanced tutorial, but we want it in the basic section so everyone can see what they will be learning if they could access the advanced tutorials. So just bear that in mind. It's not for beginners, but we want everyone to see um, what our tutorials are all about on the advanced. The first thing to teach you is something called bullish and bearish expansions. Um, what you'll have is um, the Belinga bands will be quite tight together, and then they will uh, start to run away from each other. That is an expansion. An expansion means volatility. So the price is about to, or a big move is about to occur. Um, and this is bearish expansion where the um, Belinga bands will run away from each other but the price will go down. When you get the bands pointing towards each other, it often means that the um, consolidation is occurring and you probably will get a big move. This is probably what will happen. They, they will consolidate, maybe move for a little bit, um, and then they will expand and you'll have an explosion. The price will, uh, will take off either on the upside or the downside. As a general rule, if the price touches the top of a Belinga band, things are considered a little bit too overextended on the upside. Um, and when the bands are unusually far apart, it can be a signal that the trend is ending. Um, so you've had your move, the bands are very far apart, and now the market's starting to look to what to do next. So it can be a signal that the trend is on its way out. When the bands are converged and they're quite close together for some time, you can have a period of consolidation. Um, that is often an indicator that a big move is coming at some point. Um, so you'll either get a bullish expansion or a bearish expansion. So if you find a stock or a commodity or something with Belinga bands like this, keep watching it and watch for the direction that the market's going to move because it's probably going to be quite a big one. This is the chart for US Treasury bonds and here they really respect Belinga bands. Um, we've highlighted quite a few times where a rally's gone up, hit the top of the band and broke down, it's then hit the bottom of the band. Um, as a general rule of thumb, if you touch the top of the band and it goes below midpoint of the Bellingas, then the bottom of the band then becomes the price target. So all the time you're hitting the, uh, let's say, the bottom of the band, as long as it doesn't cross that halfway point, what you'll probably get is a little rally into the halfway point and then it'll break down and the target will be um, the base of the Bellinga band again. Um, here we hit the top of the Belinga band, we broke down, we haven't really crossed that halfway point, um, so the uh, Belinga band on the, on the downside is always the target. We touched it here, we rallied probably to around midpoint and then we broke down. Um, we had a few closes outside of the Belinga band, let's just zoom in. So we had a close here and here and here. Now that is quite unusual. So Anyone who was short there would have probably considered taking their profit. Um, we got back into the Belinga bands and again it acted as a price target. Didn't quite get to the top there but we, uh, we broke down. If you see that, if you see the price below a Belinga band, that is a good time to buy a lot of the time. 
because you know it's going to get back in. Um, we near enough touched the top of the Bilinga band, and guess what? We broke down. We've actually hit and tested the bottom of the Bilinga band in bonds. Um, and at the time of this video being filmed, this is what the chart for bonds is like. We are buying because what will probably happen is we will get a rally now. We've hit the price target, um, which would be the um, the bottom of that Bilinga band. Um, we've also broke a resistance as well. You could say we back tested that resistance line today. We probably will get upside on bonds, um, and that's just through knowing Bilinga bands. Right, so here is some tactics on Bilinga bands. We hit the top of the Bilinga band, pulled away. Now, what would you do in this situation? You know there's a resistance, so you think the price will go up and hit that resistance, but we're already at the top of a Bilinga band, which would be a price target, right? So what would you actually do in this situation? This happened on gold, and we'll show you the example. Um, basically, what a lot of the time happen is the Bilinga band will carry on trending upwards, but the price will pull away for a couple of days, allowing it to um, move away, let the Bilinga band go higher, and then it will revisit that Bilinga band. So that Bilinga band acts as a target, but basically, because there's no room, the price was at that Bilinga band. The price moves away a little bit, lets the Bilinga go up, then it becomes a price target once again and you can do so many good trades through this and we had this on gold um a few days ago uh well you can see a few examples as well where on gold where it's hit uh Belinga bands as price targets if we zoom in a little bit um a few days ago we was right at a Belinga band um top so that'd be the price target we were saying on our forum to our members, we think gold will go higher, but what we think is the next few days, we're going to pull away. So we may drift down a little bit while that Bilinga band goes up. And that is exactly what happened. A few days later, what we've actually done is we've drifted away from the Bilinga band and the Bilinga band's gone up. Um, I say what is going to happen is that price will touch that uh, top Bilinga band again. So that is a new higher target now. So we've got another tactic. So you had a period of consolidation. You see and observe the uh, bearish expansion. You had a close below. The next day it opened and dropped and closed below the Bilinga band again. Now we know 95% of the time um, what will actually happen is you won't get any trading outside. So another down day like that is unlikely. Um, we say it's unlikely. We'll show you what we think in that situation will happen. What you're quite likely to get is the next day it'll open and go back inside the Bilinga bands. Um, and then maybe a couple of days of consolidation and then you'll continue uh, hitting your price target on the Bilinga bands. Let's say for argument's sake that you have a support line, a known support line. This can be quite an important long-term uh, support. Now, what we want to point out is they don't always um, act as price targets and this is when they don't if you hit this green uh, support line and the Belinga band is going lower you could say oh well the we make mints team told us that this was a price target and what you could get is a rally up after you hit that um, support line they don't always act as targets in this situation because what will normally happen is the Belinga band will come back up and it will act as a price target, but not below that support. So you will end up probably hitting the uh, the base of that Bilinga band again, but the support will hold. And um, so that's basically what we wanted to show you. Don't always think, oh, well, we make mints told us that uh, you're, you're going to hit that because it's a target. There's other things um, to consider. So that's basically another tactic on Bilinga bands. Right, so just to recap, we put some bits on the screen. If you want to pause it and just have a read. Okay, so we've called this Bilinga Band Guide and Not Rules because there are no rules with trading because something we can teach you will make you money one day and lose your money the next day. But with Bilinga Bands, they work near enough all of the time. Um, so they act as price targets. Remember what we said about once it crosses the midway point, the upper band will then become a price target. If it fails to uh, break the midway point, then the lower band will become the target again. Um, markets are considered overextended when they hit the band, which is 
which is basically why a lot of the time the price will go up, hit the band, and then it will reverse because people, traders will say, okay, it's overextended now, so let's take my profit. So they're good time um, to take your profit. But uh, this is what we uh, teach on our advanced tutorial. So hope you've enjoyed the tutorial.